Do you have endometriosis? Have you been diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome? Do you have uterine fibroids? Have you had serious menstrual cramps throughout your years? Are you suffering from heavy bleeding, heavy blood flow? Have you been put on birth control? Have they been maybe making you go once every quarter? Uh, um, have you already had uh, a DNC procedure done for the endometriosis? Have you already had a hysterectomy and you still have the uh, 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 endometriosis pain? There are different reasons for this than what you're probably being told by your uh, medical professional and by the uh, pharmaceutical industry. In this video, I'm going to share with you research that I did on an examination with a patient who suffered at 37 years of age, uh, uh, and this month, this is uh, September, her exam is September 9th of 2015. She's 37 years old. She flew in from another state uh, here in the United States to my clinic in South Florida. And uh, this, this woman had already been through years of, uh, of just suffering from, from serious pain in her lower abdominal region. Uh, she already had one of her ovaries removed completely because of the cysts on there. And she had three quarters of the other ovary removed. She had a dilation and curatage or a scraping of her, uh, the insider of the uterus. And she still deals with uh, serious pain. She did tell me that she had, uh, when she had a certain procedure done, that the the pain did, uh, she did experience relief for uh, post-surgery, excuse me, there was no pain and the pain returned in three months after the surgery. So if the surgery was the answer for the pain, if the surgery was the answer for the pain, if they were removing what caused her pain, the pain should not have returned in a day, in a month, three months, or a year. So when that pain returned in three months, she knew that they weren't getting it, and she, she, she realized that there, was, uh, that there must be some other underlying uh, reasons uh, for what's going on. At this point, this patient with her endometriosis diagnosis and polycystic ovarian diagnosis, she is uh, taking a birth control pill that's kind of covering up some symptoms, and it allows her to have a period once every quarter. Uh, there's a common belief that, um, that polycystic ovarian syndrome is only caused by insulin resistance. There's a common belief that insulin resistance is part of the, endo the uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, but it's also caused by hormonal imbalances. There's another understanding that you probably haven't heard before, unless you've been listening to my information, to my research, uh, and experiences from patients in my clinic, that there are, in addition to hormonal imbalances, there is most likely an inflammatory problem going on in the body because of A, chronic infection in one or more tissues of the female reproductive system, and B, there's toxic exposure, toxins that have been absorbed into the tissues of the female reproductive system. Um, Insulin resistance, I have not seen that in every, uh, every patient who's come into my clinic who's got these different female reproductive painful disorders. So if insulin resistance is always the cause, I don't know. Uh, why am I seeing women who come into my clinic who have these painful endometriosis or, 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 or uh, any other kind of uh, polycystic ovarian menopause, any of these things and they don't have insulin resistance. They don't have prediabetes. When it comes to hormonal imbalances for these conditions, please let me give you a bit more of an introduction here before I share with you the findings of this examination, which I'm about to do. But understand that you have an immune system that's connected to your endocrine system. So when we have immune, when we have an endocrine system that's out of order, when we have hormonal imbalances for various reasons, which I'll elaborate on in just a moment, but if we have hormonal imbalances in the body, that domino effect occurs where the endocrine system falls down, it falls out of order, and that domino falls to the immune system, and the immune system can now get out of order and cause inflammation in tissues. There is research in the immunology world that shows that whenever there is a, a part of the female reproductive system taken out, that we have an immediate increase in inflammatory cytokines. These are inflammatory substances in the body that make inflammatory uh, inflammation responses 
invade many different tissues from head to toe. So we're going to be sharing with you what goes on in this system when there is not only an, uh, an endocrine disorder, a hormonal imbalance that can cause an immune stress in the body, but also when there is an immune stress, an immune stress that can cause an endocrine disorder that can cause the hormonal imbalances. Because if the immune system is connected to the endocrine system, the endocrine system is connected to the immune system, whether the chicken, what came first, the chicken or the egg, at this point for you, and you're suffering from PCOS or endometriosis or, or any of these different types of stressor, stressful, painful uh, symptoms, diagnoses that you're going to get from uh, a, a, a well-meaning uh, uh, gynecological uh, examination and gynecological opinion about your, your concerns, you've got to know that there are various other reasons that they may not be able to find causes of your condition that they may not be able to find from a regular blood test. My name is Dr. Lonnie Herman. I've got extensive background in, in neurology, in uh, functional medicine, in endocrinology, in thyroid disorders, in autistic disorders, immunology, neurochemistry, neuroimmunology, alternative cancer therapies, biochemistry, as well as uh, now one of the finest uh, sources uh, of, sim uh, of systems of a bioresonance testing where we can actually sort of like taking a biopsy of every single tissue of a person's body without having to invade their tissue and do a biopsy, I can listen with a very unique system to all of the tissues in your body, to the different cells and different tissues in your body. And that had been developed for years by some Russian physicians and, and, and some research in Germany. And uh, it's right here for you right now in my clinic, and I can help you. Let me go over the exam findings of this uh, female. I won't be mentioning her name. We're going to keep her private, her, her, her uh, personal information private. But let's go over the findings. I want to go over really the major findings that we discovered in this first exam. Uh, and this first exam was set to develop a protocol to help her start fixing, removing, eliminating the causes of the condition. Uh, but there's another exam that uh, I believe that she's scheduled an appointment for to do an inventory analysis of her body to be able to find what's in other various tissues in her female reproductive system and other parts of the body that can cause hormonal imbalances and that can cause inflammation systemically uh, that would be on another day. So two separate exams uh, for two different purposes. One is a protocol and one is to really just get a registry, a register, excuse me, an inventory, an assessment of multiple different tissues. That uh, way she'll be aware of how much cleaning, so to speak, how much fixing has to be done. In this examination, one of the tissues that came up for her as a very stressed weak link in her body, a weak tissue in her body, was her pudendal nerve. The pudendal nerve, if we could look at the woman's body, if we cut a woman in half and turn it on the side to see the inside of the female reproductive system, we're going to look this way and see that there is a vaginal canal and there is a colon. They, they, they're, they're sort of like this together in the body. So we have this vaginal canal, colon, in between this area, which spreads out over to the front of the female uh, part of the uh, uh, vaginal area and around to the anus. We have what's called a, a pudendal muscle and a pudendal nerve. I'll put those names on the screen so you could read those. You can look them up in Wikipedia. Do some Google image searches on those so you become more familiar with your body. But there's a pudendal muscle and a pudendal nerve. In her examination, which can never, which can never be studied in a blood test, which will not be studied in an ultrasound of the uterus, which will not be studied ever with a gynecological or a proctological, they're not going to be able to put their finger inside your body in the vagina or up the rectum and be able to touch this tissue and say, we know that you have an infection or a toxin or both, or which infections or toxins are in the pudendal muscle or in the pudendal nerve, which can be causing your chronic, seemingly chronic type of urinary tract infection type pains or vaginal pains or or, or, or endometriosis types of uh, uh, pain. So with my work, I can do that. The pudendal nerve, I found in her a very high level of the Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria. That is the causative agent in what is called Lyme disease. 
Not everybody has Lyme disease causing the same kind of symptoms, by the way. Okay, not everybody gets paralyzed or has serious chronic fatigue with that or fibromyalgia. This woman in her pudendal nerve, we see the Borrelia burgdorferi Lyme infection. I also found multiple different parasites in her pudendal nerve. I also found that the pudendal muscle was seriously weak and stressed, and it also was going to be getting remedies in addition to the pudendal nerve, in addition to the Borrelia infection there and the parasitic infection. We're gonna be making remedies, which I already made in center, excuse me, to help her repair her pudendal nerve, to help her eliminate the infections from the pudendal nerve and help her repair and improve the function of the pudendal muscle. Uh, further down through the examination, I won't mention every single part of her exam here, uh, it's just really too much to share, but that, that one of the weakest tissues in her body showed up as her endometrial tissue. The endometrial tissue is the inside of that whole uteral, uterus area, the internal tissue. That endometrium, not only does it need some repair remedies provided for it, but we have found, I found for her, in that endometrium, on this day, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 21 different infections and toxins invading her endometrial tissue. Listen, we can have all these different infections and toxins in different parts of her body, but some people don't get endometriosis, some people don't get polycystic ovarian syndrome, some people have sore throats from these infections, some people get headaches from these infections, some people have Crohn's disease from these same infections, some people have celiac disease, some people have uh, diabetes with these infections, some people have heart disease with these infections, some people have thyroid disease with these infections, and the list goes on. Some people get arthritis from different infections. So. So yes, these infections, which you're gonna hear, can be in, in, in different people without the same symptom that she has. Some people with the same symptoms that she has. Let's understand, same infections can be in different people, in different tissues, causing different symptoms, okay? In her endometrium, she has the Lyme infection, not as, in, not as, uh, as, as much of the Lyme infection as, as her pudendal nerve, but it is there. She has side effects of a vaccine called the MMR vaccine, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, weakening, damaging, stressing her endometrial tissue, which can cause scarring of the tissue. Avalox is a serious, dangerous antibiotic in the fluoroquinolone family of antibiotics. And this Avalox is known to cause damage to human tissue, whether she was prescribed that Avalox in her uh, 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 regimen over the years from these different physicians, or if the Avalox was uh, consumed by eating different meat or, 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 or poultry products, because these companies will provide Avalox and other Cipro and other kinds of serious, uh, dangerous quinolone antibiotics to these uh, animals. And then we eat the product, we drink their milk or have the ice cream or the cheese or eat, their, or eat the egg or eat the meat or the poultry of that animal and then we can become toxic with that same antibiotic and it can get into any tissue in the human body. She has uh, different bacteria in there. One of them was strep A, another one was staph, uh, staphylococcus E. She had uh, herpes simplex virus. She had a chemical that's from a hormonal uh, type of medication. I won't use that big word. Maybe I'll put that up on the screen so you could read it. Uh, it's just a, 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 a big word to discuss right now that I don't want to impress you with that. She had pesticide chemicals inside her endometrial tissue. She has a bacteria called Enterobius in there. She has mold, a type of mold called, uh, that we're gonna label as house dust mold. She has side effects of the DPT vaccine, the diphtheria pertussis tetanus vaccine. She has bacteria called mycoplasma, bacteria, dangerous bacteria, inflaming, damaging, weakening, stressing the endometrial tissue. She has another bacteria called actinomyces. I'll put that name on the screen. There's another couple of bacteria here. I'll put those names up. She has toxic mold in there. Uh, another couple of different bacteria she has, which I'll put, the, I'll put the names of these different bacteria so you could read them on this uh, screen. She has herpes zoster a virus, which causes shingles, which can cause scarring of skin. It can cause, after outbreaks in the endometrium, 
echo scarring of the endometrial tissue. And if you can get shingles on the outside of your body, you can get shingles on the inside and in the organs of your body. And since the shingles can cause scarring of the skin, it can cause scarring of the endometrial tissue. Simple to understand. For all of the people out there who are endometriosis sufferers, who want to believe that there is no known cause of endometriosis and your only way of handling it is with hysterectomy, that is your decision. You have the right to think and believe whatever you want. If you've already had a hysterectomy and there are many women out there in the research that I've seen online and look it up, pain of endometriosis pain after hysterectomy. Look that up. Pain of or endometriosis pain after hysterectomy or after hysterectomy surgery, you're going to see that there are women who suffer pain and numbness in their lower abdominal area after the uterus is taken out. If the hysterectomy is the answer, and some women will get relief, some might just get relief, but some don't get relief. Some continue to suffer with pain after the uterus is removed. So if removing the uterus and the endometrial tissue will be the relief, if that is the answer, if that's the only option that you have and you want to believe that, why do some women still suffer with pain after it's removed? And that's what I'm sharing with you. And, and some women, I'm sharing you why that's happening. Some women will suffer endometriosis pain and scarring, and the doctors are telling them that there is no known cause of this, that there are no tests and no research that will tell you. I'm here to tell you that it's different whether you want to uh, uh, grasp this information and embrace it and start to realize that there are other methods. Listen, many years ago, they did believe the earth was flat and it was proven round. Well, I'm here to help you understand and help you see differently because you don't deserve to suffer anymore when you realize that there are some options out there. You better take advantage of these if you want to get out of pain. Uh, because even hormonal therapies that women take don't get them out of pain in a lot of cases. Some do, some don't. I found the Babesia microti parasite. So in addition to all those other infections, I found parasitic infection by what's called Babesia microti in there. Listen, all these different infections in the endometrial tissue Leaving it there is not wise. Getting rid of it is wise because when you can get rid of the infections and the causes of the scarring and the causes of the inflammation, what a much better chance you have at stopping the pain. And I see women who come into my clinic who get out of pain after following one or a series of these protocols that I develop for people. These protocols, I'm able to take these infections and these tissues and these toxins and make duplicate copies like cures like. I'm not here to cure endometriosis. I'm not here to cure PCOS. I'm not here to cure a condition or a disease in the body. Let me make that very clear. What I'm here to do is help you figure out which infections and toxins are causing the inflammation in your tissues that can also be causing hormonal imbalances and help you alleviate those, help you eliminate those infections and toxins that are causing the pain and help you alleviate your pain. Listen, if a strep infection can get in the throat and cause sore throat and cause you to have inflammation when you can barely swallow, most of us have had a strep throat, why is it impossible to understand? Why is it impossible? Why, is it, why, why, why do some people have a disbelief that you can get the same strep infection in your reproductive system causing the same kind of inflammation, swelling, the same kind of pain, the same kind of disturbance, but your doctor hasn't found it yet? We can find it, and I'm here to help you do that. I'm here to help you do that, because you can overcome this condition, no doubt. It's not just the endometrium that may have the infection. It could be the uterus. It could be the cervix. It could be the fallopian tube. It could be the ovary. It could be in the liver. It could be in your bone marrow. It could also be infection inside your red blood cells. We have to, we have to, help you, to help you get well, you can have it in your blood vessels, in the arteries, in the capillaries, in the veins. In order for you to get well, you've got to open your mind and your heart and begin to embrace other understanding of what could be causing your condition. And that way, you will be able to have control over your body. You will be able to get your life back. 
this may give her some relief of her overall condition. This may give relief of only a percentage of her condition, but as I said, if there's infection in the fallopian tube, still causing inflammation and pain, there's infection in what's left of one ovary, if there's infection in the cervix, infection in the uterus, if there's infectious in, infection in the corpus luteum, if there's infection in any of this tissue, in the liver, in the bone, we've got to be able to find it and eliminate it so she can experience relief. Share this video with a friend. Share this video with one person you know. That's not hard to do. This message needs to get out there and help people get out of pain. There are millions of women suffering with these conditions. Like my Facebook page, I share information there all the time. Every day, every week, I'm putting up information that is very valuable for you. And, um, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's information here all the time. Be the first to hear and see these videos when I put them up. Call my office, schedule an appointment. The number here is 954-370-3100. Begin to open your mind, open your heart, and see that there are other answers. There are other ways to help you help yourself get well. You are the one who can help yourself defeat your condition. You are the one who's going to be able to use different systems and different tools to help yourself, give yourself the best chance at getting your life and your health back and getting out of pain. My name is Dr. Lonnie Herman again. I'm here to help you. Thank you for letting me come into your home and share this information. Share this, like my page, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I'm here to help you make a difference in your life.